Welcome back to the shop. In this one, I'm going to do a little bit more update on the panel. Really, this is more about uh, some of the lacing I've been doing, but mostly about the mounting of the actual GMA 245 audio panel, which I call radio many times. And uh, also a quick update on a slight change I had to make to how I was doing the wiring for the GTN 650 with the backup power. It just has to do with, it doesn't have a redundant pins like most of the Garmin equipment. Pretty straightforward, but I needed to get it in. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Another update for you. Uh, doing a little bit on the wiring, mainly. Um, you can see here, I'm doing a lot more of the lacing. I know I'm gonna have to change some of this later, uh, but at least it's kind of giving me an idea of how things are gonna look. Um, hopefully I won't have to redo all of it, uh, but it's certainly given me a great idea kind of what I need to do, how I need to connect them up, how the, how the runs are going to do, make sure I got enough slack in them right as I move them around here. But overall, I think it's, uh, it's coming out pretty good. And of course, getting uh, a whole lot better with the lacing. So right now in here in this main section, you'll see uh, my PDF is wired up. I also have the connector on here. Out, You can see it out through the front. That's for my MFD, that's all wired up. I do have to change the PDF uh, because um, I wired it up because there's a, I guess there's a, a stereo audio out that looks like it's coming from XM. And I guess in older versions of this, you could get XM radio on it, uh, but that's not possible anymore. Uh, I guess unless you buy an old one, as far as I could tell. So I wired it up to the to my GMA 245. Didn't think about it, and uh, now I realized if I'm going to put an XM uh, XM receiver in here, I'll need to actually run that to the XM receiver from the 245, not from the PFD. So something I got to change there, but you can kind of get an idea. So that's done. Uh, my autopilot's wired up pretty much. You'll see there's a couple of wires hanging around. This is for some go around. There's also some backlighting wires in here. Uh, down here, you can actually see, uh, you can see it here. this guy, he is wired up, uh, hopefully correctly, for my G5. I've started wiring in. Uh, this is my mags and my starter. So I've started wiring that in. But all of this front section including the backup battery. I'm starting to do a lot more of the of the lacing, cleaning it up. So the main wires I have in here now that are loose are the uh, the CAN bus. And then in the back here, I haven't started doing anything with this yet. I wanna make sure I got more of the wires run before I do too much with that. Uh, but overall, it's, uh, it's pretty good. The one thing that did turn out to be a problem is I have been wiring this IBBS 12 uh, battery backup, presuming that all of my Garmin products have both a primary power pin oared in with a, a, uh, a backup pin so I can run the primary pin directly from the vertical power and then the backup pins directly from this. However, when I was starting to do this lacing, I thought, oh, I'll run the power cables for my uh, GTN 650 navigator. And when I started digging into that, I realized, wait a minute, it doesn't have two separate pins for it. So instead I had to make some changes. Um, I now have this wired up to have a pass through. So what was coming out of the vertical power that was gonna go uh, to the uh, GTN 650 to provide power normally, I've actually had to route that as passed through to this unit. And then from this unit, I power to GTN 650 directly. And then uh, for my other devices, I wired them up using the, the primary and the backup pin as they were. But uh, just a, a heads up, it wasn't too big a deal to, re to go change it. I did do need to do some splicing uh, not necessarily happy about it, but it's it is what it is, um, and that's really to splice in uh, the multiple connectors that I needed to do for that. And of course, 
the GTN, the pins can only handle, uh, I'm not sure how many amps, but it's like maybe three, something like that. Uh, they're the, the small pins. So what Garmin does is you run multiple lines. So what I've done here is you can see, I've got, uh, I've got two wires here. This is for the transmit. So that'll be four amps, each wire basically carrying two. And then I've got two wires. One is for the nav and the other one is for the main supply to the GTN 650. So that's something you wanna think about as you're, uh, as you're wiring this up. And then of course, all the ground pins from the GTN 650 will also need to go back um, so that you have multiple coming back to carry that, uh, that current load back to ground. Anyway, I just figured I'd share this. Um, I wanted to also do this lacing and get this laid out because I wanna take it apart again. Um, I wanna finish working on installing how I wanna get the radio installed. Uh, sorry, not the radio, the, uh, the audio panel. So the, GT, uh, the uh, 245, I wanted to get that done. I wanna get some of the uh, some of the connectors put on for the devices I have in here because right now they're all just click code on which is fine for the moment and then also I really do want to trim this back a little more um, it does push out on it and uh, I think it needs to be just trimmed back more so I need to take it out and then uh, lastly just remember carbon fiber is a conductor and so if you don't uh, don't realize that if you touch a wire off it it will indeed conduct to ground, so just keep an eye out for that. Anyway, hopefully this was uh, interesting. Cheers, bye. Well, finally figured out how I'm gonna do this. You can see I've got the bracket on the bottom. I've got a couple of angle pieces on the side, which I'm either gonna rivet this unit onto it or bolt it on, I'm not sure yet. Bolts may be a little stronger, but I'm not looking for it to take apart. This will actually come apart on its own. And then of course these little L brackets will get riveted on here. So this unit then goes mounted in behind this opening here. And it will be attached to the front and the carbon fiber through these screw, hole, screw holes. So on the back of this, there'll be nut plates where they attach so you when you tighten it it tightens it in just based on the way it's sitting you can see here one of the reasons that works is there's a gap in here between that front face and the frame this gap is enough to put in the nut plates and allow this bracket to be put in here so i can tighten it down so i think that should work good um, once i get it in that'll be pretty solid um, between the carbon fiber and of course this is flimsy because it's not the right material this will be twice as thick and it'll be uh, harder material so that'll be a lot more stable as well and then I'm still trying to decide do I mount it attach it in the back as well I would want it to droop down so I'll have to see about that but uh, yeah there it is that's how it's gonna look and uh, I'll uh, when I get everything put together here I'll uh, I do another quick update on it. Cheers. Okay, there it is. I have the bracket mounted. Uh, you can see here, I've got a rivet through it. Uh, not a rivet, a Clico on here for now. I won't do the final touches on this until I get the final panel face because this is gonna be slightly different. It's the holes a little too big, but you can kind of get the gist. And you know, even with, oops, even with it just laid in here, I mean, it's going to be pretty solid, so I'm not too concerned. Um, if I need to, I can always put a bracket along the back here, which I may do, but we'll see once I get the actual thicker panel and everything else in here. But here you can see there's the bracket in here, and uh, you know it's pretty straightforward. So I put the bar, the uh, angle bracket underneath, and then it'll get. Uh, screwed on here, here, and here. So that should give it pretty good, make it pretty rigid. Like I said, this frame will be different. Also, once I put the display in here, the display has a backing, so that'll make it a little more rigid. So I'm expecting this might work out uh, just fine.
but uh, that's the way I'm gonna mount it and uh, so far so good so now it's back to doing some more wiring and now that I have that in place what I'll do is I'll put the back piece on this so this piece you can see there's a screw on the back here there's a little hole in the front right there above the Bluetooth symbol um, you put an Allen key in there, this turns, it screws it and pulls it in to the connectors that are on the back, which means you can take the radio out, you can leave that all behind, and uh, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's it. Slowly but surely. Cheers. Well, I'm happy to say, got it solved. All sorted out for the uh, audio panel. So here it is in, and again, uh, you know, like I mentioned, you actually use an Allen key. There's a little hole here, you put it in, and that screws this unit, tightens it into the bracket, which you can leave mounted. I did what I said earlier. I, uh, I fabricated the bracket. I've attached it onto the back of the panel, if you can see here, and uh, that will get screwed on through the front plate, through the carbon fiber, and into that angle bracket. And that holds the front of the GMA 245 level. And uh, like I said, this piece here, you know, this is pretty flimsy right now because this was just a cheap piece I had just to kind of template it out. Um, when I get the real piece, this will be a hardened material or a harder material. It'll also be twice as thick, but uh, it gives a good idea, kind of placement of everything. And then the second thing I did is I put this in. So uh, I haven't attached this yet. I'll do that when I do the final fitting and I get the very final front panel because if the radio moves at all, then I don't want to have to remake the bracket. But basically what I've done is I've taken this bracket and I put a screw in through the side and actually, here, let me uh, let me take it apart and show you how this all works. So again, if you unscrew the panel, the radio, you'll see that it'll start to separate. The connectors and everything stay behind, which is pretty nice. So once you get your wiring, you don't have to really worry too much about uh, leaving a service loop. And then you can just take the radio itself out and it plugs into those connectors. But now what you can see in here is there's actually a screw in here that attaches this bracket to this. I'll attach that to the rib and that'll make this all very nice and solid. And I think it'll be a nice stable uh, framework for the 245. But figured I'd share that with you. Looks like it'll work out good for me. And then I'll have the three screws here in the front, that on the side. And what's nice is, because I'll put two, I'll put two screws in here, I think. You know, initially I thought I'd just rivet this bracket on, but this is gonna be a little painful to get to to undo. So it might be nice to be able to unscrew this, take the whole thing out, and then if you gotta do something with it. But uh, yeah, that should make it very stable. Anyway, cheers.